Good evening, teacher. Hello, hello. Good evening. So there was no conversation today, huh? Because um, I was the only one. Oh, oh, okay. The first one was Jose Luis, but Jose Luis, I believe that he cannot answer. Yeah, that's what he, he texted a while ago. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, so here we are, you know, uh, day number two, week number two. And um, yeah, ready to get started with the new topics and new information. Only one thing that is going to be new for today is the way in which we're going to be doing um, the question practice at the beginning, because this time around, we're not going to have it as regular. I'm not going to be asking you guys questions. This time around, I need you to think of a question that you may ask your classmates. So today, you are going to be the ones asking the questions. We have done this kind of thing before, where um, we start with one person, and then that person asks another, and another, oh. and another, and so we follow you know, the wheel. So that's what we're going to be doing this evening, just so I can see how you guys um, structure questions. And of course, the take or the challenge is going to be that you have to ask questions that are open-ended, you know? Um, so when we talk about open-ended questions, we refer to questions that require you to answer with a phrase, not only by saying yes or no, because those will be close-ended questions. But now, before any of that, and before I forget, because in the, um, in the class that I taught, at noon, I actually forgot. Um, happy Valentine's to you all. I hope you, you guys had an amazing day. Um, this time, I will not be scared if we have a low attendance because, of course, it's Valentine's. So probably uh, many of your classmates are going to go out with their, um, with their peers or with their um, families even. So, yeah, you know, um, okay. Understood, Janeth? Understood. Okay, so, um, yeah, you know, some, some people might not be able to join this evening because of that, because it's Valentine's and because it's uh, a night schedule class. But anyway, the ones who are here for us who are um, already into the class, that's how we're going to be working this evening. The question is going, questions are going to be asked by you. Then, of course, we're going to jump into talking about birth of belief, um, we're going to have to create some examples for those. Then um, defining and non-defining relative classes. Those are also a very interesting way of using um, descriptions for nouns. Some of them are crucial when you're talking about a noun or describing a noun. And others are simply information that might or it might not be regular. I mean, um, uh, what you might call it, it might not be important when you know you you um express said information. But anyhow, um, too much of me. Now I want to know about you. How uh are we going to start? Well, the first person to ask the questions, I think, is going to be you, Sandra. So think about a question and oh, one classmate yeah. who you will ask uh this question to. So, okay, to Jancy. Okay. You can see if God gave you the opportunity to choose what to be, what would you like to be? In, uh, I repeat, please, I can't understand. Yeah, it was pretty quick. If, if God gave you the opportunity to choose what to be, what would you like to be? If hmm. I have opportunity of what? I don't of, know. Of becoming yeah. someone else or something else. If God can... give you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, um, if God gave you, because it's, mm -hmm. it, it will be the, it, it, right? it, uh -huh. mm -hmm. if God gave you the opportunity to choose what to be, what would you like to be? Um, if I like to, um, if somebody give me, for me? No. Something no. for me? I don't we're know. We're talking, <laughs> estamos diciendo si Dios le diera la oportunidad de ser Algo o alguien, eso no sé si... De, de, to choose, to choose. Ajá. Si Dios le diera la oportunidad de escoger qué ser. Qué ser, ajá. Qué le qué gustaría ser. ser. What would you like to be? Un ángel, etc., etc. 
Oh, no. Very open. Um, um, a real Christian person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. You are. Yeah. Right. That is a very good answer as well. Are you... yeah. yeah, because sometimes, you know, we have doubts. As Christians, sometimes we come across doubts. So asking him for guidance will be a very, uh, very good option. So good. Very good. Okay, Jancy, how about you? Think of a question. Piense en una pregunta y esa se la vamos a hacer a algún compañero. Así que, ¿cuál podría ser una pregunta que usted le haga a un compañero? Mm, uh, about whatever. Yes, whatever it can be topic. any topic. Okay. Mm, I don't know. It's, uh, if, you, if you can cook, uh, for your family, what what food do you, you cook? Do, do you cook? Okay. okay. And who are we asking this? Ah, okay, a, for, a uh, únicos, for a man. A... Yes, for a man. Uh, Joaquin Ramirez. Okay. Yes. A los únicos que no, para que lo tomen en cuenta los demás después, eh, sería en este caso a Janet y a Luis, porque creo que Luis también como que está conduciendo, entonces mejor no lo vamos a distraer. Así que a Janet y a Joaquín, ah, perdón, y a Luis, no les vamos a, a preguntar. Así que Joaquín, if you had the chance to cook for your family, what would you cook? Okay, teacher. Um, I would like to, to cook uh, for my family uh, uh, chompi pollo. Chompi pollo. Chompi pollo. In okay. December, I cook yo les iba a decir, miren a quién le vinieron a preguntar eso, al que le tocó cocinar todo diciembre. Oh. <laughs> ok, so chompi pollo. Was it a good experience to cook for your family? To cook chompi pollo for your family? Yes, teacher. Okay. And in December, I cook uh, chompi pollo uh, horneado, no sé cómo se dice. Um, it would be, no sería baked. ¿Cómo sería al horno? Um, no, no es roasted tampoco. Uh, very good question. <laughs> Ornea, uh, you would be roasted, I think. Roaster. Okay. I think. Roaster, okay. I, I cook uh, champi pollo rooster. Um, yeah. Roast and, chicken. And my experience uh, was very <laughs> uh, interesting. Because um, um, I don't uh, I don't know what ingredients or material put in before um, to introduce um, and in the in the lorno. <laughs> mm -hmm. Before you put it in the oven. Um, mm. and I I. I like to no. I uh, I look look in in internet how the how to cook the chumpi pollo. <laughs> chumpi pollo. It was um, the same, you know. At this time, I mean, I don't know if I told you this, but I think I did. But um, I don't have my mom alive, so uh -huh. she passed like almost 14 years ago. And uh, when I was little, I remember that she used to cook basically the same she used to cook um turkey for us on christmas mm -hmm. and um this year we wanted to do the same we wanted to to make turkey me and my sister i am not meaning to brag but me and my sister we consider ourselves very good cooks so we think that we cook nice food and uh, we were trying to make um turkey but it was basically the same because we had never done it before like we had never ever um baked a, a turkey or or roasted a turkey mm -hmm. and uh yeah we had to to go to the internet and try to find out the yeah. best ways to um to cook turkey and how to add flavor to it yes. because sometimes what happens is that for example these chickens or this this um birds are very big you know and they have a lot of meat yeah. and all that meat sometimes it's very lame as well. Like if you just cook it and don't add any flavor into it, 
it is very lame. Like the, the flavor is just meh. So the best way we found was to inject some um, seasonings into the, the meat. And at the end, people who were over to our house, they liked it. So I think that we did good. And another thing was that we were trying not to make it too salty because most of the time when I have tried um, field chicken or field turkey, o sea, que eso sería relleno, uh, mm -hmm. cuando decimos field, yes. um, it is too salty. Like the preparations that they add, they add, too, they add too much salt into it. And ours, in my opinion, was just good. So yeah, it is, it is a challenge. Es un, es un reto. El yes. hacer, o sea, ese tipo de comida es un reto. <laughs> I suppose to my family, le, uh, the feel a good taste. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Because, because they, they, they don't, eh, no sobra, pues. <laughs> Ah, ok, so they liked it. There was, ahí, en ese caso se dice leftovers. Cuando hablamos de sobras, o sea, o que no hay sobras, mm -hmm. sería there was no leftovers. Ok. So no leftovers. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Ok, Joaquín, think now of a question. Sí, piense ahora usted su pregunta y a quién le va a hacer su pregunta. Any, any kind or, uh, or topic. Yes, it can be any topic. Ok. Uh -huh. Um, um, Amilcar. Okay. Amilcar. So, what is okay. the question for Amilcar? Mm -hmm. Today is Valentine's Day. Um, what, uh, what do you give or gave to your, to your uh, um wife or spouse okay so today for valentine's Amilcar, what did you give your wife yes or uh, spouse or partner okay, okay. um uh the petition to my wife uh i gave i gave her a a security box <laughs> <laughs> a security box to say uh, several documents or, oh. or any rings or uh, neck or neck necklaces and necklaces uh -huh. okay and she told me several days uh, my love if you want you can give me a security box with love okay <laughs> with key <laughs> okay. okay so i i gave that um That's your gift to your wife. <laughs> All right. So just one thing. Eso se llaman okay. safe. See, a eso safe. le llamamos una safe. Yeah, it's a safe. Uh, okay. So you gave her a safe. Oh, a safe. Okay, pretty cool. Yeah, a safe is a really nice gift. <laughs> Uh, yeah, because now she can have all of her. Okay. En ese caso, por ejemplo, cuando también eso es otra cosa que decimos lo de la um, the jewelry, o sea, todas las las joyas, eh, nos jewelry. podemos referir a ello directamente a como jewelry. Jewelry. Okay. Uh -huh. Ahorita se los envío. Jewelry. Y eso incluye Jewelry. pues todo, ¿verdad? Lo que sería. Every, everything. Yes. Jewelry. Let me see. Earring and necklace. Uh -huh. Everything. Um, Jewelry. Oh, uh, one sec. So yeah, that is what you gave her then, a safe. Very good. Okay, Amilcar, what is the question that you are going to ask and who are you going to ask this question to? Or uh, whatever classmate? Yes, any classmate. Okay. Uh, I see uh, a, little, a little classmate or a few. Mm -hmm. A few classmates, okay. yeah. Okay. A few classmates, okay. And uh, I want to, 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 to Catherine Sanchez. Okay. And okay. what is your question for Catherine? Okay. Uh, about uh, 
the Valentine's Day? About what, sorry? Uh, about the Valentine's Day. Oh, about Valentine's, okay. So ah, what okay. is your question? Okay, so what is the question? Okay. Okay, Catherine, uh, uh, today is the Valentine's Day and I like, uh, I like to know what to give you to your, your boyfriend or husband. I don't know. Oh, wait, <laughs> I think Catherine left the, I think she left the meeting. So yeah, she's not here anymore. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So maybe we can redirect the question to Julia because yeah, Catherine is not, he's not here anymore. So yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think we're going to go with Julia. So Julia, what did you give okay. your special one? Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Hello. Uh, actually, I didn't give him anything. Oh, really? Yeah, because we are planning to have a, a special dinner, but on Saturday. So today we didn't do anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, you know, actually, okay. So there was something I wasn't, I didn't want to talk about, but now that we have reached this point, I think I will just do it. Um. So in my case, for example, there has been something very, um, sad happening the last couple of days because my girlfriend's grandmother she just passed away two days ago um oh, so yeah oh. we have been on, on on the funeral you know oh, thing sorry. right now i'm actually at my girlfriend's house <laughs> so um yeah the thing is that of course we didn't have the chance to celebrate and uh, it was basically a plan and we were just talking about the same thing that uh, is happening with you julia that um you know, sometimes there is not really a time set for love. You know, when you want to have fun with the with your loved one, you can do it whenever. Like it doesn't have to be necessarily on one specific date. Um, so yeah, we just decided to cancel every I mean, not cancel. Actually, I told her like I didn't feel okay um going to celebrate with her, knowing that her grandma was very sick. So I was like we better don't do anything just now, you know, maybe we can do something afterwards, like next month or whenever you, you feel better. Um, because yeah, right now is not a proper time. Um, so yeah, sometimes, you know, things happen and, uh, these days turned into something that was not, um, as happy, you know? Um, but yeah, celebrating with your loved one can happen anytime, whenever you feel like doing it, you can do it. So hopefully on Saturday, you guys are going to have a blast. All right. Um, how about you, Julia? What is the question that you're going to ask and who are you going to direct the question, the question to? Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, for Daniel. Okay, uh, for Daniel. Do you have a... Bed, and if you have a one, what is it? Okay, so Daniel, do you have any pets? And if you have any pets, what kind of pet is it? Yes, I have a pet. I have a cat. Uh, I have three cats. Hmm. Their names are Pelusa, uh, Uron Play, and the last, uh, Banana. Banana. <laughs> Banana. <laughs> okay. My sister. And uh, do you have fun with your cats? What? Do you have fun oh. with your cats? Yeah. I'm um always always stay with me. Do would you say, Daniel, that you prefer to have a cat than a dog? Or yeah. are you okay with either? I prefer uh, I I prefer have cats. I don't like uh, the dogs. And why would that be? Why do you like cats better? Let's see if we share ideas because in my case it's the same. I don't like dogs that much. I mean, I like them when I see them, but I don't like having them. So tell me, um, what would be your opinion? What do you think it's better about cats than dogs? I don't know. Uh, Simply, I, I like more cats. Oh, okay. Well, in my case, if I'm to be honest, the reason why I don't like dogs that much 
is because they are too dependable. You know, they, they, they depend too much on the human. Yeah. And cats are more independent. Like, if, for example, you have any food, any leftovers, anything at home that a cat can eat, and you're not home, he's going he's gonna to feed himself. Or if, for example, there is any rat, there is any, any, anything that the cat can get a hold on around the house, he's going to eat. He's going to be alive. And it's, if, for example, you want to go on vacation, I feel, I have experienced this before, it is way better to have a cat. Because if you leave a lot of food for a cat, it's going to eat it slowly. You know, they have like a, like a self-control. You know, they can control themselves and they don't go and attack food and eat it all at once. But dogs, if you leave a lot of food to a dog, it's going to eat it on the first day. And then on the second day, it's going to be starving. And then the third day, the same. So, yeah, I have always preferred to have uh, um, cats than dogs. But another thing about me is that, honestly, I like animals, but I like them to be free. Because I feel like whenever, when I make the decision of having a pet, I am going to do it because I'm going to take full care of that animal. And I don't like pets because I feel like right now, on the point of my life that I am right now, I will not be as responsible of um, a pet right. as I would like, you know. Because if, for example, I, I'm the kind of person who likes to go out a lot. Um, so if by any reason I just decide on Friday, hey, Let's go and stay at the beach or let's go and stay at, at the mountain. And uh, once I get there, I just happen to remember, oh, my God, my dog. And then, you know, it's going to be sad because I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to um, to stop my vacation, to stop having fun and worrying about my pet. So, yeah, that's why I don't want to have a pet until I'm older, I think. Once I become older and I have more grounded spaces at my house. I might just start um, having a pet, but I do share your opinion. I, I like cats a little bit more than dogs. Okay, now- I love cats uh, too, teacher. Sorry? Yes, I, lo I love cats too. Okay, so you're a cat uh, person. Uh-huh, my, my cat is, is a female cat mm -hmm. and, and her name is, oh no, its name is um, Chloe Elizabeth. Chloe Elizabeth. Yes. Cool. Yeah, you can say her. Actually, when we talk about oh. pets, you can say her. Okay. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Because um, we use the pronoun it when we're talking about animals that we don't know. Mm. For example, if uh, I was talking about a giraffe, let's say um, th there is a giraffe at the zoo. It was very, very big because I don't know the giraffe. Or I don't even know if it has a name. But uh -huh. um, if by any means I happen to see that the giraffe is Mary, I know yeah. that it might be a female. So I can say her name is Mary and she is very big because now I know um, the gender of the animal and the name of the animal. So we refer to animals as it when we don't know the animals. But once we know the animals, if we want, of course, because there are going to be people who are rude and that's life. <laughs> so yeah, there are going to be people who are rude and are always going to refer to animals as it. But yes. if, for example, you like pets, you like animals, um, you can refer to them as him or her, depending on the gender of the animal. Oh, so yeah, it's it's okay good. if you say yeah, it's okay if you say her her name is um what was her name again? Chloe Elizabeth. Chloe Elizabeth. <laughs> that is very fancy. That sounds like a like a royalty cat. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, Chloe Elizabeth. Chloe Elizabeth, you had your tea. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, Daniel, um, your question. Who are you going to be asking your question? And what question is it? Any kind of question? Yes, you can uh, ask okay. any kind of open-ended questions. Okay, <laughs> let me see. Helen Guerra? Okay, so question goes to Helen. What is the question for Helen? Okay. Um, what do you give? Uh, what do you give on Valentine's Day, or what do you do in this day? Okay. So Helen, what did you give on Valentine's to your special one, if you have one, or what did you do today? Today it was like a normal day because I had to go 
to my work, to my job. Mm -hmm. um, it was like, yeah, a normal day. But yes, I gave my boyfriend a like a little breakfast. I bought some fruit and then I cut it like a um, portion. And then yeah, it was kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Yeah, so I gave him a breakfast. Okay, sounds like a very nice detail, you know, getting a breakfast, a nice little breakfast to your boyfriend. Very nice. That sounds um, like a like a very nice detail. So very good. Well, well done. Now, apart from the fact, of course, that you had a regular day because you had to go to work, but still you found some time um, to give your special one a detail. So very good. En mi caso, yo las flores que tenía para mi novia se las di para la abuela. Este, okay. um, Helen, your question. What is your question and who are you going to ask the question to? Um, let me see. I'm going to ask... Um, you, you, you okay, no, Janet is not available right now. Oh. She's at the oh, office. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, so then Lourdes. Okay. Okay. Um, tell me, Lourdes, um, what is your favorite holiday? Oh, very good question, Lourdes. <laughs> what is your favorite holiday? Uh, hi. Hi. Um, maybe it is the New Year because it's it's like when you close uh, one chapter and start another one. Uh, so I like to do that, like make the review of what I accomplished during the year and set new goals, set new, it, it gives me, it gives me like, uh, like a new start feeling. Um, and it's because I have vacations too, so <laughs> I feel rest. <laughs> okay, yeah, New Year's, I will say the same, you know, in my case, I think New Year's is one of my favorites uh, in terms of celebrations. I prefer New Year's than Christmas because I remember that Christmas was a time that I used to enjoy a lot with my mom but once she uh, was not with us anymore I, it was like boring to some extent maybe not boring it was sad for a couple years and then I just I don't know I switched into liking um, New Year's way better for example one thing that I do n normally Salvadorians um, we try to have a new attire for um for Christmas and for uh, and for New Year's. On Christmas, I don't really mind. You know, on Christmas, I just wear a t-shirt, a pair of shorts, and I'm good <laughs> with that. Now, for New Year's, I try to get the best I can, you know, for because I want to start the year with the right um, direction. So, yeah. So, very good. New Year's, a very good option. Okay, now, Lourdes, your question. Ahorita creo que Katherine está un poco estable, así que no sé si le gusta, si gusta preguntarle a Katherine, creo que ahorita no se nos va a salir. Uh, you may ask her. <laughs> if not, you can pick anyone else. But your question, and who is the question going to go to? Uh, okay, if Katherine is available, um, yeah. I would like to know what was your favorite cartoon when you were a child and why? Very good question. So, Katherine, <laughs> your favorite cartoon when you were a child and why? Tres, dos, uno, Catherine se fue del chat. No, okay, Catherine, are you here? Or maybe as Truval. Yeah, here. yeah, maybe we can go for him. So, Chua, what was your favorite cartoon when you were a child and why? In my case, I love all the cartoons that appear in the, in the TV when I was a child, mm -hmm. but... The, the ones that I really loved was Tom and Jerry. I really loved that cartoon because it, it was, I have a lot of fun when I saw them. All right. Yeah. So yeah, Tom and Jerry, they had some quite some adventures. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but in recent years, people have um, analyzed Tom and Jerry. And they have uh, actually came up or come up with the idea that they were not enemies, that they were actually friends. And that um, what happened is that sometimes Jerry was trying to protect Tom 
and he was doing it in a way that he caused him harm. I don't know. That's just something I read um, or I saw. I don't even remember right now. But that they said that they were not really enemies as they were shown in the cartoon. They were more like friends. And uh, the, the thing is that Jerry was too hyped to some extent. And he will cause um, Tom harm when he was trying to help him. But uh, yeah. And another, and another important thing about that is that uh, that cartoon has like some sex scene that when we were a child, we never realized. But yeah, we never then, picked up on them. Yeah, but mm -hmm. now when you watch them um, again, mm -hmm. you realize. Yeah. Yeah, from the adult mind, now you understand what they what they meant. But okay, very good. So Azdrubal, you're going to be the last one. Esta va a ser la última. So you're going to have the chance to ask uh, one person uh, a question. Uh, and who is it going like, to be? Let me see. Um, I don't know if Jancy, Yvette. Jancy, 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 Jancy. Ya le, ya le a Jancy. Yes, she was the first oh, one. Yes. Oh, wait. So, so we can close the wheel. I think we should go ahead and ask Sandra because she started the thing. So maybe now we can we can wrap it up with her. So you can ask oh. her. Okay, Sandra. Yes. In, in the case that you have the ability to have a super power, what will be the super power that you want to have? Yo quería preguntarle lo mismo antier. Oh my God. El domingo se me ocurrió, se los juro. Yo dije, nada, mejor no van a decir que infantil. <laughs> but yeah, if you were were able to have a superpower, what superpower would you pick? Oh my god. <laughs> well, about as uh, science fiction, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I could I could have any. But speaking about uh, God's power, I've got God's power. And I if I pray for uh for people who is sick, God makes the miracle to 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 come back no no no, no. to sane to heal mm -hmm. yes but but that is a special thing you know uh, there is no no science, science fiction no is that's a power from god you know and it's really important yeah but we have to seek it first mm -hmm. not that is only because i want uh, it's because god but see that our our entrega to him <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So still, uh -huh. yes. In my case, you know, I, I think about this sometimes. There is something that I think it will make humanity more sad, to be honest. I think mm -hmm. uh, my wish, you know, my wish for humanity, I think it will make us more sad. But I wish there was a way if 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 we had, you know, the the the, the blessing of getting an additional thing yeah. on our on our brains just mm -hmm. to identify without needing machines without needing all the equipment just being able to identify the illnesses that are affecting others lives because oh, in yeah. that way probably I'm, I'm just guessing but probably we will be more um more humble and more polite to people if yeah. we knew the struggles they have if we knew how hard it is to be them probably we will we will be more um gentle you know to people um yeah. but yeah i also think that whoever if there is ever a person with with such power i think will be very <laughs> sad because you know walking around any place and seeing that a person is happy with him with sorry his or her family and he or she doesn't know that he or she has cancer but you are able to see that that will be very sad but yeah i thought of that a while ago and i was like to some extent i wish i had that power but at the same time it's like very sad because imagine being the one having to tell this person hey <laughs> sorry to interrupt your fun but i just wanted to tell you i was looking at you and i found out that i have this power given by god and you have cancer bro <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah it will be very sad that's why I, i tell you it will be very very sad but at the same time it will be something um that will help some people because yeah, yeah I mean, of course. Don't, don't have for example right now with this situation with my girlfriend's grandma 
they spent like six thousand dollars taking her from hospital to hospital oh trying to God. trying to find out what what she, what was wrong with her she was actually old but you know spending a lot of money just trying to find out what's happening and mm. at the end it was basically just her liver the one that wasn't working anymore was her liver but they had to take her to many hospitals just so they could find out what was yes. going on. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, at last year, one mm -hmm. of our classmates was very mm -hmm. sick. And uh, um, I I prayed for her mm -hmm. uh, because she was really, really bad, you know. Uh, she was crying, but she felt the power of God when I, when I prayed for her. You know, and thanks God. Now she's starting in another in another section with the same uh, advanced course. Right oh, now nice. she's studying in another I don't know section now. Yeah, section yeah in, another, in another group. In another group, yeah. Está con lo del B. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, ya la vamos a agarrar pedrada. No, <laughs> <Come on. laughs> that happens. That's just yeah. <laughs> elite people. <laughs> yeah. Sí, va, el que estaba diciendo que sea buena gente. <laughs> Pero esa es la escuela, that's what happens. No, I'm just yes, kidding, I'm just kidding. But yeah, sometimes it is very rough. Sometimes we don't know. We are mean to people sometimes and we don't know what the, their struggles are. Um, bueno, solo quería decir, um, Catherine, no worries. I understand it is, um, it is hard sometimes with the internet. You know, technology is good, but at the same time, sometimes it makes us... Um, struggle a lot. Ok, so, anoche estábamos hablando acerca de esto, ¿verdad? Teníamos cubierto hasta eh, la parte del bed. Sí, hablamos de que cuando decimos bed, eh, we are very sure about something that we can even put our, um, what? Possessions on, on the way. We feel so confident on it that we say, I bet you, you know, I bet you what I'm telling you is right. The next one is doubt, doubt. When you use doubt, um, you use it, for example, to, to talk about something that you consider is not going to be possible. If, um, if, you will, if, you, if you were to ask me, I will say something like, I doubt I am going to miss a class uh, on, this, on this course. But at the same time, um, there is a still a possibility, but I doubt it. You know, and from my perspective, I doubt it. I do not think that I'm going to miss a class because I am willing to be here for all the classes. But then you find out that I have all the electricity problems that I have quite often. So it's not under my control. But from my perspective, I just doubt it. It's something that, um, you know, I don't consider in my mind. So yeah, doubt it. Then figure figure this is another one that um it is very similar to guess very very similar those two are, are very similar when you say that you or somebody figures something it's basically like saying that you imagine this thing you know i figure i imagine basically the same thing like um i figured you you, you see one of your uh, co-workers on his desk and he's going from this um, keyboard to this other keyboard and then from keyboard to keyboard. And he's just working a lot. And you see how he's just rushing through things. And uh, when you approach him, you tell him, hey, I figured you're busy, right? Entonces, es como decir, me imagino. Sí, o sea, como lo ven que está ahí dejándolo todo en el campo. You're like, yeah, I figured you're busy. Um, or if you see someone that is tired, that is basically falling asleep, you can tell this person, hey, I figured you're very tired. Entonces, that is basically like saying, me imagino. So, I figure. The same with guess. Say, so, guess. Different. Aquí es una cosa importante que también me gusta recalcarles. Por favor, no se me vayan a equivocar. Guest, con la T al final, es invitado. Y guess, así. De hecho, también es una marca de, de ropa. Pero este tipo de guess es básicamente para decir um, que supongo o adivino, sí, adivino pero no decimos eso nunca, ¿verdad? yo nunca digo, yo adivino ¿sí? no digo, yo adivino esto, yo adivino lo otro sí se puede, por ejemplo eh, digamos que todos ustedes que preguntaron a los demás compañeros, what did you give your special one for Valentine's? 
Entonces, si esta persona les dijera, guess, come on and guess, ahí sí se puede. Sí, o sea, les, en español me refiero, se podría decir, ¿verdad? Adivine, sí, o adivina. Entonces, ahí sí, cuando es como, como una invitación, como un tipo reto. Pero, no si ustedes van a hacer un comentario y van a decir, I guess that you gave him chocolates. Sí, no van a decir, yo adivino que le diste chocolates. No, sino más bien vamos a decir algo como, yo supongo, sí, yo creo que le diste esto, que le diste lo otro. Entonces, ese guess se va a traducir como adivina, solamente si estamos como haciendo el reto hacia la persona, diciéndole, ¿verdad? Adivina, invitándolo a que adivine. Pero cuando ya hacemos un comentario acerca de eso, utilizando la palabra guess, and I say, I guess you did this, I, the same thing, same example as before. You have this coworker who is very busy. Um, you can tell him, I guess you're very busy right now. Entonces, como supongo que estás muy ocupado, porque te veo, ¿verdad? Que estás aquí, para allá, de allá, para acá. Entonces, I guess. Um, so, as I, as I told you earlier, figure and guess are very similar in meaning. Then we have have a hunch. Have Teacher, a hunch. Yes. Uh, I have heard uh, the expression, I guess so. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I guess so. Supongo. Por ejemplo, uh -huh. esa la podemos utilizar en el caso de... Um, si yo dijera ahorita, I think, um, ¿cómo es que se llama? Ah, es, I think Walter might be on dinner with his wife right now. Sí, o sea, yo digo ese comentario, ¿verdad? Creo que Walter está cenando con su esposa ahora mismo. Entonces, yes. uh, usted puede decir, I guess so. O sea, es oh, como yeah. decir, ah, supongo, supongo que sí, I guess so. Yeah. Entonces, okay. el decir, I guess so, es como para demostrar que estoy de acuerdo con lo que la persona dijo. Y además, eh, dar mi opinión, ¿verdad? Tipo, ya, yeah, I guess so. Ahora, diferente sería como, por ejemplo, si ustedes tienen contacto con Walter y saben que, qué sé yo, está en el súper, ¿sí? Comprando suplementos para su, para su restaurante para mañana. Entonces, mm -hmm. ustedes pueden decir, I guess not, because I saw this post earlier that he's going to introduce a new menu, so maybe he's getting, you know, the new ingredients for the said menu. Entonces, ahí sería diferente, decir, I guess not, o sea, tipo, supongo not. que no, pero es porque yo tengo quizá una información diferente. Entonces, oh, en okay. ese caso, cuando yo utilizo el I guess not, um, sería para eso. O también se puede usar como una capciosa, ¿sí? Como una pregunta capciosa, o sea, en el caso que, let's say there was a party and I invited um, a friend, And the party was supposed to start at 3 p.m. And at 3.30, I text this friend, hey, are you coming to the party? And he doesn't reply. And then at 4 p.m., I go back to the chat and tell him, okay, I guess not. Sí, entonces es como, vas a venir a la fiesta y después no me contesta. Yo le escribo otra vez y le digo, bueno, supongo que no. O sea, ah. entonces, I guess not. Uh, así se puede usar solo, ¿sí? Cuando es como, como para ya, cuando yo llegué a una conclusión y ya yo digo, ah, supongo que no. Pero si es el otro caso, ¿verdad? Cuando estamos eh, simplemente conversando acerca de algo y usted tiene información diferente a la que yo tengo o diferente a la opinión que yo acabo de dar, entonces ahí se diría, I guess not, because, and then you explain what the person might be doing. Then you explain what information you have that is different from my information. Bless you, Joaquin. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so now we have have a hunch. Have a hunch. I don't know how many of you guys are fans of uh, Spider-Man movies, but the ones who have watched Spider-Man movies might know that he has, you know, the tingle thingy. Yeah. So when you have a hunch, it's like you have a feeling. You, you, you can feel it in the air. Como ese sentido de mamá, sí, o sea que ustedes han hecho algo malo, llegan a la casa y la mamá le dice, mmm, ¿qué hiciste ahora? Sí, ¿en qué te fuiste a meter? Es como que tienen, ¿verdad? Ese sentimiento, ese, esa, Parece. ese presentimiento, sí, o sea, como esa idea de que. Corazonada. Ajá, la corazonada también, de que hay algo ahí oculto, sí. Entonces, I have a hunch. Ahora, when can you use this? Um, let's say that one of your friends was applying for a new job and he told you, hey, so the application went okay, but I still have to wait uh, for, for the results, you know, to come through. And if you want to tell this person a few words of, um, how can we say it? A few words of, of, of uh, support, you can tell him, 
I have a hunch you're going to get the job. Sí, o sea, como tengo la corazonada de que lo vas a, a, te lo van a dar. Si sí, I have a hunch, um, o si no diferente, en el caso que ya pasaron dos semanas, esta persona no les contó nada, y ahora se ve todo feliz, ahí como muy contento, ¿vea? y como queriendo meterse en deudas, típico salvadoreño, que antes de tener eh, la gallina ya, ya echó los huevos, entonces um, ya rentando casa y todo, ya metiéndose a, a sacar carro, entonces ustedes dicen, I have a hunch you got the job. Sí, o sea, como tengo la corazón de que ya te lo dieron. O sea, como ya, ya estuvo. Entonces, para eso sería, I have a hunch. Sí, I have a hunch. Ok, then we go to one that is tricky, people. Este es quizás una de las, de las frases que, a ver, se usan, sí se usan. Pero se usan más que todo cuando hay discusiones o cuando es como un tema muy complicado, sí, o sea, para eso más que todo se va a utilizar esa frase que viene a continuación, el no for a fact, sí, no for a fact, es como decir, yo estoy 100% seguro de esto, o sea, es como que yo tengo hasta pruebas de esto, como dijo mi papá, o sea, si digo que la mula es negra es porque tengo los pelos en la mano, sí, entonces, I am very sure about this, so I know for a fact, pero como les digo, esa es una frase que no se usa solo así como en el day to day, sino que en el day to day normalmente ustedes dirían, I'm sure, sí, I'm certain about this. Pero en el no for a fact, es como si alguien eh, me dice, ¿verdad? No, el carro que compro aquel es rojo. Sí, y le digo, no, 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 I know for a fact that it's blue. Entonces es como tipo, yo estoy 100% seguro que es azul. Sí, no es rojo, es azul. O sea, el rojo quizás uno que rentó, pero el azul es el que, el que es de él. Entonces, ahí sería, ¿verdad? Cuando utilizamos el no for a fact, que es como para poner nuestro conocimiento, nuestra idea, lo que nosotros sabemos, por encima de lo que la otra persona puede estar mencionando. Entonces, por eso les digo, es más como en un, un contexto de una discusión, un contexto de un argument. So, yeah, no for a fact. Then, the next one is suppose. It's basically the same I'm guessing, you know, basically the same as guessing. I suppose it's like I have an idea. Sorry, I have an idea. I don't have backup for said idea, but I have the idea. I think it is possible. I think it's something that um, is happening, but I don't have one detail that proves my idea. Then I say, I suppose this, I suppose that. Okay, the same with suspect now, but suspect is more like, um, There is, suspect is very similar to have a hunch, de hecho. Suspect es bastante similar en algunos contextos a have a hunch. O sea, como el ejemplo que les decía de que ya ven a la persona muy feliz, ¿verdad? Y que estaba aplicando un trabajo, pero ahora se ve como bien feliz. O diferente, alguien que fue a aplicar por la visa y cuando viene de regreso viene hasta con la maleta. O sea, ustedes dicen, hmm, I suspect you got the visa. Sí, o sea, sospecho que te la dieron, ¿verdad? Porque pues como, ¿por qué la maleta? Sí, si no te hubieran dado, hubieras venido, pero con pupusa, quizás de regreso, pero, ajá, uh -huh, why? Entonces, um, suspect, sí, it would be very similar to having a hunch. And a suspect, a suspicious thing is when, did you see some details, you find some details on the, on the situation that make you consider that it, something might be possible, you know, an idea that you had might be possible. So that's when you use suspect. Ok, ya les di ejemplos casi que para todos, así que ahora es el momento en el que ustedes piensen en esos ejemplos. Ya después de esto vamos a ver eh, si hay alguna duda, ¿verdad? En cómo se utilizan, pero aquí tengo básicamente todos los um, verbs of belief y quisiera pues que ustedes me puedan ayudar con un ejemplo por cada uno. Tenemos assume, be certain, be positive, be sure. Of course, these ones are going to be um, replaced. Estos bees van a ser reemplazados, ¿verdad?, por eh, pues la conjugación correcta del de sujeto que ustedes utilicen. Um, then we have bet, doubt, figure, guess, have a hunch, know for a fact, suppose, and suspect. So, who might... Sure. Okay, I'm in car. <laughs> okay, uh, the first. All right. I, assume, I assume that this Friday we're going to have a class. Okay, the, that, sorry, the what? I assume that uh, this Friday we 
Uh-huh. Where I have class. Uh-huh. <laughs> We are having classes. <laughs> we're having a class. Okay, I assume this Friday we're having a class and your assumption will be correct. Very good, very good. Okay, now you can pick anyone. Sí, o sea, pueden elegir cualquiera. Eh, así que, a ver, anyone else? Joaquín. Yo, eh, eh, the second. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I serve time. I am serve time. I'm in certain. Uh -huh. That you, that every one of this course Mm -hmm. It's going to be, it's going to be pass. It's going pass. It's going to pass. To pass. Okay. I am certain that everyone in this course is going to pass. Very good. Todos menos Walter porque faltó hoy. Le vamos a ponerme la nota. Okay. Next one. Be positive. Be positive. Recuerden que be positive se utiliza también en una forma muy similar a decir que estoy seguro. Sí, o sea, es como tengo certeza de algo. So be positive, or I'm positive, she's positive, we are positive. Um, an example. Okay. Okay. Yancy? Yes. I'm positive. I'm positive. Um, we enjoy English class more today. We enjoy English classes. Oh, sorry. More today. All right. I am positive. We enjoy English classes more today. Great. Very good. Um, how about be sure? I'm sure, she's sure. Vamos a, a tratar de utilizar un uh, pronombre que sea distinto, ¿sí? No necesariamente decir I, sino tratemos de ir con otro, con tal vez you, she, uh, we, cualquier otro. Vamos a ver. Um, what can you think of using an, a different pronoun? Mm -hmm. They are sure that their children are able to do it. Okay, so they're sure that yeah, the, that their children that their humor children oh children. sorry that their children uh huh are able are able to do to, it okay are able to do it uh okay saben qué va esta es una forma va una forma que y viene aquí ya ya apareció de hecho incluso la 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 cómo se llama la corrección o sea, el decir are able to do it, sí, es una forma de decirlo. Luego está the children can do it, sí, que los niños pueden hacerlo. Y si no, mm -hmm. también the children are capable, sí, pero aquí vamos a cambiarlo diferente. Aquí sería capable of doing it, sí, capable of doing it. Y esta incluso va a aparecer como, como un error gramatical, muy probablemente, sí, ahí está ya, ya apareció. ¿Por qué? O sea, muchas veces ¿verdad? la compu lo que trata es simplemente de irse por el camino más, um, más sencillo. ¿sí? Miren, yeah. lo, toda esa frase la cambia solo por can do. ¿sí? Can mm -hmm. do. Entonces, pero tenemos esas tres formas. O sea, usted puede decir are able to do, uh, to do it, are yes. capable of doing it, or simplemente, um, or simplemente, or simply, <laughs> you can say can do it. ¿sí? They're sure that their children can do it can do it mm -hmm. or simplement it okay bet bet <laughs> any idea we may have using bet esta lo voy a hacer yo vaya vamos a ver she she bets she's the best at math So she bets she's the best at math. Sí, ella apuesta que es la mejor en matemáticas. Entonces, básicamente, ¿verdad? Es lo que está diciendo. Y se fija en esta palabra, bets and best. Tienen las mismas letras. Okay, so she bets oh, she's the best. On the country. At much. Yeah, just on the country, on the country side, on the, on the last two words. Okay, how about doubt? Doubt. Algo que yo dudo, algo que yo de lo que no estoy seguro. What can be something that I may say? With doubt, I doubt, without, they doubt that something is happening. Uh, maybe Helen can come up with an example. Um, okay, I doubt tomorrow mm -hmm. there is not going to be traffic. There I is doubt always traffic. Tomorrow. Okay, aquí sería entonces, I doubt that. Uh, oh, sorry, perdón. Okay. I doubt that. 
I doubt that. Um, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is not. Voy a decirlo diferente. It's not going to be jammed. Sí. I doubt that tomorrow is not going to be jammed. El motivo por el cual me fui con esta ruta es porque el decir that tomorrow is not going to be, um, there is not going to be traffic, sería muy redundante en inglés. En español funciona, o sea, que nosotros digamos, ¿verdad? Dudo que mañana no vaya a haber tráfico. Pero en inglés es como un poco redundante el decir, I doubt that tomorrow there is not going to be traffic. Um, porque ya estaba, o sea, en este caso, eh, sí es cierto que aquí hay doble negación, porque está el doubt y está el isn't, pero el, el utilizar el indicador there is not hace como demasiado redundante ya la, el hecho ¿verdad? de que tenemos doble negación en, um, en, esta, en esta oración específica. Ok, then we have figure. Sí, figure. Figure básicamente es como decir que me imagino. Así que, ¿cuál puede ser un ejemplo que pensemos con figure? He can figure out all his homework alone. No. <risa> no funciona porque figure, sí, ya va, ya va, ya va. Porque figure out es un phrasal verb. Ah, es another. Uh -huh. Figure out es a phrasal verb. Uh, sí, otro one. In, in this one we can say or, or it is possible to make a question. Uh, can you figure out my age? No, same thing. It's it's a phrasal verb. Si sí, ven que figure es es más común verdad que se utiliza como figure out. Es que figure es como hear, me imagino. That. Sí, o sea, pero no, es, sí funciona, o sea, funciona, pero en ese caso el figure out eh, tiene otro significado It's y es como adivinar. Uh -huh. que viene ya acompañado con, mm. con la proposición out, entonces sería un figure right. out. Si sí, no right. sería figure, sino figure out. Ese se utiliza yeah. en otros contextos. El decir figure es en otros eh, contextos. Yes, because figure out, eh, I, I was meaning here. Um, Okay. He can solve all his homework. Alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a different meaning. And figure on its own has a different yeah. meaning. Something yes, that we can say will be some uh, will be a phrase like she figured. Um... I, teacher. Yes. I I figured that we will class this Friday. Yeah. Okay. Basically the same thing as before. I figured. Uy, perdón. I figure that. Ay, Dios. <laughs> I, figure... I figure that we are having classes. Oh, we are going to have a class this Friday. Okay. Esa sería una muy buena. Ahora, la que yo estaba tratando de seguir era la siguiente. Se la voy a terminar de escribir solo para que quede también el ejemplo o un ejemplo más de cómo podríamos llegar a utilizar figure. Sí. She figured what he wanted for Valentine's. Sí. Es como ella se imagina que es lo que se imaginó que es lo que él quería para San Valentín. Entonces, es más como imaginarse. Diferente sería si yo dijese aquí, she figured out. Sí, she figured out. Entonces, significaría, ella se dio cuenta. En ese caso, es como más certeza todavía con el figure out. Pero con figure es solo la idea. O sea, yo me imagino que eso es, pero no estoy 100% uh -huh. seguro. Similar a la utilización que le podemos dar a guess. Sí, por ejemplo, uh, we can say, he guesses. He guesses this is his last um his last time in prison. <laughs> so, él cree, sí, él cree que esta es su última vez en prisión. Vamos a imaginarnos que estamos hablando acerca de un custodio, ok? No vamos a irnos por el lado más uh, peligroso. So, yeah, he guesses. He guesses this is his last. Vamos a ver. Vamos a cambiar eso mejor. His last chance to get her love. ¿Sí? Él cree que esta es su última oportunidad de ganarse su amor. Entonces, he guesses. Sí, él cree, él supone, él se imagina. 
he guesses this is his last chance to get her love. Y todavía, esta de hecho tiene otra forma de decirlo que sería más completa. Sería to get her to love him. Sí, to get her to. To get her to love him. Sí, sería que este es, él cree o él se imagina que esta es la última oportunidad que tiene para que ella lo ame. Sí, o para ganarse que ella lo ame. Muy bien. Uh, ya son las nueve. Qué rápido. Bueno. Oh, my God. Ya son, ya son las nueve. Bueno, eh, so we have, have a hunch, know for a fact, suppose, and suspect as a homework. You guys, if you want, you can take those, you know, and find out different phrases you can say with them. And tomorrow we may start the class with those, you know, providing <laughs> examples of when we're going to use have a hunch. When can we use know for a fact? When can we use I suppose or we suppose or they suppose? And when can we use suspect? But okay, well, for now, that is basically it. Uh, thank you guys very much. Thank you for your attention and your participation on this evening's class. I hope I'll see you tomorrow again. I hope uh, all of the classmates are going to be here after their dinners and they're going to be telling us all the stories that they uh, were able to live with their loved ones. And yeah, thank you very much. Um, happy Valentine's. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye for now. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b